Good morning. How are you today? Good. Hmm. So I have a question for you. Do you know what month we're in right now? What month is it? Do you know? November. You're right. What happens in November? Hmm. What kinds of things happen in November? What do you think? Thanksgiving is in November. You're right. What else happens in November? Did you have an idea? The leaves fall down. You're right. They're all gone now. Hmm. What else? They what? They turn color. They turn color. You're right. What? Veterans Day. You're right. Wow. So many things happen in November, but Thanksgiving is one of them. What do you guys do on Thanksgiving? What do you like to do? Do you have any family traditions? What do you do? Play. You play? You play games? What else do you do? We play games. You play games? So many games. What else? Um, we go to my Mimi's and Papa's house. You go, yeah, you go to your family's house and you celebrate. Hmm. I like to eat lots of food. How about you? You like lots of food. What's your favorite Thanksgiving dish? Oh, you have Turkey. Turkey. Um, pet pie to Peppers and cucumbers. Peppers and cucumbers. Ooh, yeah. Fellow vegetarian. Yeah. What? Cinnamon buns. Cinnamon buns. Yummy. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a favorite food, too? Beet. Beets! Oh, super cool! Oh, they are yummy, especially when they're roasted. I know, right? <laughs> Colorful palettes you all have. Wow, so do you know the most important thing that we do at Thanksgiving is? What do you think? What is Thanksgiving all about? What is it? It's about how it's for. It's about having fun? Yeah, I think that you're right. And one of the ways that we can have fun is what? Be, be thankful. Yeah. We can be thankful. It's a time, it's a season for us to look at all of the amazing things and be thankful. Do you know that God talks a lot in the Bible about being thankful, about living with joy in our hearts? Um, so that we don't get jealous of our friends and we're just sort of content with everything that we've got. I know this morning in Sunday school, you guys wrote some things on leaves that you're thankful for. Would you like to share them? What do you think? What did you write on your leaf that you're thankful for? Animals. 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 How about you? What Cow. You? Cows. <laughs> I love it. I'm thankful for cows, too. What did you write? I'm thankful for my dogs and TV. Oh, good. What do you think? I'm thankful for my two dogs. They're very special. I feel for Ho Ho and my Barbie. Oh, and your Barbie. Yes. Santa. <laughs> and Santa. <laughs> the two go hand in hand, right? What'd you put? I like PJ Masks. PJ Masks. Yeah, that's a good show. And you're thankful for toys and cars. I'm with you, buddy. <laughs> you like PJ Masks too? Oh my gosh. So I think what we're going to do today is, do you see this tree behind me? We're going to add all of the amazing things that you're thankful for to our Thanksgiving tree. And we're going to ask all of our grown-ups to write something that they're thankful for on the leaves that are in the back and hang it on the tree, too. Right? Okay. Okay. So, kiddos, would you like to come up and hang your leaves on your trees? You get to show the grown-ups how it's done. <laughs> And grown-ups, when you have your leaves filled out, feel free to come forward as you finish writing on your leaves.
And how about we pray together? Can we do that? Let's do that. Dear God, thank you so much for all of the blessings that we have in our life. We are so lucky for cows and PJ masks and turkey and all of the other wonderful things that you send our way. Help us to have joy in our hearts all the time beyond Thanksgiving and beyond November and to do your will and glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Eternal God, open, open our eyes to see so many blessings that our physical eyes can't see. Open the eyes of our spirits. Help us to look deeper into ourselves and deeper into our lives to behold your blessings for which we give you thanks most especially on this day. In Christ we pray. Amen. One Sunday a year we focus more intensely than usual on giving thanks to God for our blessings. Throughout the year we offer thanks to God as a variety of events and opportunities and things trigger that feeling of thankfulness within us. But on this Sunday and on this coming Thursday, we focus especially on giving thanks to God and looking a little bit more deeply into the many things for which we give thanks. In the next few minutes, I would like for us to look beyond the usual things for which we give thanks. Food, clothing, shelter, family, friends, financial stability. I want us to look a little deeper than those things. Those are the things for which we normally give thanks, but on this day, if we simply recycle our thank yous given throughout the year, we miss the point of giving thanks to God. What might have escaped our notice in this past year? All the things that I just named are commonly things that are mentioned during our prayers of joy on Sunday mornings. We commonly think of God providing these things for us. But notice that they all have to do with our physical and our social well-being. We are more than physical bodies and social beings. The letter to the Ephesians reminds us once again that we are also spiritual beings and have spiritual blessings for which to give thanks. As you listen to Ephesians chapter 1 verses 3 through 10, listen especially for the spiritual blessings for which we give thanks this day. And I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us 
in the Beloved. In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of His grace that He lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, He has made known to us the mystery of His will according to His good pleasure that He set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in Him, things in heaven and things on earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'll ask Noah to run through the PowerPoint slides once again, and I will ask you on the sermon notes insert in your bulletin to write down the spiritual blessings that you find in that passage. You may also use the Pew Bible if that is easier. Take just a couple minutes and write down the blessings that are mentioned in this passage. There are at least six. Writing to the saints who are also faithful in Christ Jesus, which includes us, by the way, not just the people living in Ephesus at the time. The letter lists at least six spiritual blessings given to us by God. It's quite an impressive list. It includes the following. God shows us before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and blameless. God destined us in love to be God's sons and daughters through Jesus Christ. God lavishes grace upon us. God gives us redemption through Christ's blood. God forgives us of our sins. God gives us wisdom to know God's will, which is that in the fullness of time, all things in heaven and on earth will be united in Christ. Wow! What an impressive list of blessings we have all been given. It makes all the usual things for which we give thanks pale by comparison. It is indeed wonderful to have parents for whom to be thankful, but to be the son or the daughter of God? What a blessing that is! It is one thing to tell a loved one, I am so sorry I broke that crystal goblet. Dad, I'm so sorry I wrecked the car. It is something totally different to pray to God and say, God, please forgive me for offending you, for not loving your children, for not loving my neighbor as you would have me do. From time to time, we all fall short of God's glory. And what a blessing it is to know that God forgives us when we mess up, no matter how badly we mess up. We can't mess up so badly that God will not forgive us if we ask. There's an old adage, we never miss the water until the well runs dry. The adage is meant to point out that we often take for granted those things for which there seems to be an endless supply. 
I wonder if that might apply to our spiritual blessings. Might being thankful for more of our spiritual blessings, might what is in the forefront of our minds be subject to the possibility that we could lose them? Or perhaps we have gone without them in the past. Going without something for a while often makes us much more aware of it and much more thankful for it when we have it again. If our gratitude for the things that meet our physical and social needs is somewhat dependent on our awareness that we could lose them, that we could have to live without them for a while. I wonder what that means for our awareness and gratitude for our spiritual blessings. Think about that for a minute. In order to be consciously aware and truly thankful for our spiritual blessings, do we need to experience going without them for a while? I wonder if we express gratitude less often for spiritual blessings because God seems to give them to us in an endless supply. I wonder if God's gracious and constant giving of those blessings makes us take them for granted. And so we are less likely to think of these blessings on Thanksgiving Sunday and on Thanksgiving Day. <clears throat> what if God's spiritual blessings were not constant. What would it be like to go without God's forgiveness for a while? What would it be like not to be claimed as God's son or daughter for a while? What would it be like not to receive God's grace. Grace that God lavishes upon us. What would it be like to do without that for a while? To be unforgiven and disowned by God would be horrifically horrible beyond our imagination. We would not be able to pray. We would have no comfort in suffering and distress. God would not listen to our prayers of remorse. And there would be nothing that we could do to get those blessings back. We didn't do anything to begin with to get them. We didn't earn them, and we certainly didn't purchase them. We would be unable to get them back. Thanks be to God, quite literally, all those blessings are gifts of God's grace. We have that wealth of blessing because God loves us and wants to bless us. And nothing, absolutely nothing, can separate us from God's love. We are assured of all those spiritual blessings because in Christ, God assures us of God's unfailing love. Sometimes our faith gets weak. The circumstances of life can do that to us. 
Sometimes we may find that we don't have the strength to keep hanging on to God's hand. But God never, ever lets go of our hand. You can lose all of your strength to curl your fingers around God's hand. And God will still have a very firm grip on all of your fingers. On this Thanksgiving Sunday, I want to propose something else for the list of things for which we are thankful. Let's put God on that list. Not at the bottom, after we have listed food and clothing and shelter and family and friends and a two-car garage. Put God at the top of the list. Let's thank our God for being our God and for making us God's children. Let's follow through with the opening line of the line in Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. And as we put God at the head of the list, let us begin writing below that heading all the many spiritual blessings that we begin to realize we each have. More than likely, once we start that list, we will continue over the course of the next seven days, the next four weeks, the next 52 weeks to think of more. So take up the challenge, keep an actual list of the spiritual blessings you become aware that you have I guarantee you that list in and of itself will become one of your blessings. Amen. Amen.